Jeff Cavalier from Athlete X is undoubtedly one of the biggest pioneers in YouTube fitness. I'm sure everyone that's watching right now has at least watched one of his videos. I don't want to doubt that he's a fitness expert. However, his recent swing technique is horrible. And it goes to show that no matter how much of an expert you are, there's always something to learn. So instead of just bashing Jeff, let's make it a teaching moment. But before we get started, I have a gift for you. 30 days filled with kettlebell workouts for free. Check the first link in the description. Now here's the biggest problem with Athlean Axis or Jeff Cavalier's swing technique. It seems like he's not really extending his hips. He's very arm dominant. He's very tight in the upper body. There's not really a proper pendulum happening. And the biggest mistake of all, Jeff, you are a conditioned, well-rounded, muscular athlete. A 16 kg? Come on, man. It should be at least a 24. A funny thing is I made the same mistake like Jeff, when I started out with kettlebells before I got some proper coaching. So the mistakes Jeff is making are common for beginners who are not really used to kettlebell training. And most of us who have never touched a kettlebell before have probably trained in a traditional manner, like barbells, machines, and dumbbells. And of course, if you use these training tools, you have to build up a lot of tension. However, with the kettlebell, it's just like Bruce Lee said it. You have to be like, water. You have to understand when to contract and you have to understand when to relax. Now I'm going to show you how to do a proper swing in a second, but just as an important side note, the workout that he's doing, combining a swing with a bodyweight conditioning exercise is a great idea. I just recently posted a short conditioning idea with a swing and a half burpee combined, which worked out well for our clients. They really loved it. So let's go through the basics real quick of a swing. You see when Jeff is doing the swing, he is not really extending the hips and there's way too much tension. So that's why it looks like this. Of course, I'm exaggerating a little bit. And if there's too much tension, there's a couple of things that you can see. The upper body's too tight, the hip is not really extended, and the kettlebell is flapping back and forth in the backswing. So let's cover a proper swing. This is what it's supposed to look like. And our 16 kg for me is way too light. That's why I have to use at least a 24 kg for a double-handed swing. So Jeff, if you're watching this, please, the next time I wanna see you swing a 24 kg with proper skill. So let's pick up the 24 kg for a spin because it's giving me proper feedback. And as a small side note, that's exactly what heavyweights do. If you have the technique down pat, pick up a heavy weight because a heavy weight will highlight any flaws in your skill. So now let's check out the basics of a swing. I make sure before I get started that I have a half a meter distance to the kettlebell. I'm hinging and then I go down a little bit to my knees. I don't bend them too much. I just unlock them. Now I grab the kettlebell tilted towards me so that the base of the kettlebell is off the floor. And now here comes the important part. As I pull the weight, boom, between my legs, I want to make sure that my arms make full contact with my body. Now I'm hip thrusting the weight up with my hips. So I use a lot of force that's coming from my posterior chain, boom. And as I reach the top position, I have to go into full lockout. I have to extend the knees and push the hips forward, keep my arms connected to the body until, boom, the force of my hips or the energy from my posterior chain sends my arms as well as the kettlebell flying. As soon as the kettlebell reaches approximately chest level, here's the apex moment where gravity sets in again and wants to pull the kettlebell back. I let it do its thing. So the kettlebell comes back down and I wait until my arms make full contact with my body again. As soon as I have full contact with my body again, I'm hinging and bending the knees a little bit and I give the kettlebell enough space to travel. That's what happens with athlete excess form. The kettlebell starts flapping back and forth because it doesn't give the kettlebell enough space. Once I have given the kettlebell enough space, I boom, hip thrust the weight back up. This is what it looks like with a 24 kg kettlebell. In conclusion, I want to say that the kettlebell is just like a martial art. Yes, there is weights involved. 
Yes, there's also momentum involved. Yes, there's tension and there's an important kinesthetic literacy that you have to have developed in order to understand the exercise, but it's also a skill. You have to have the proper information and then execute based upon that information, put in the reps and build the skill. And one of the reasons why I believe a kettlebell needs more skill than for example, a dumbbell or a machine is because we have momentum involved. And momentum is a highly unpredictable element. And if I want to learn how to control an unpredictable element, I need to spend enough time with it. So here's the next step that you have to do. You have to like the video, consider subscribing, share with the friends, and then go watch this video. Maybe I got you interested into kettlebells. It's the first time you're on this channel. We're all about kettlebells. Then you gotta watch this video because it's a beginner series where I teach you the fundamental basics of kettlebells. So if you're interested, Go click it and watch it right now.